Hello. I figure I wake up the guy so <laughs> at this time. So hi, my name is Gabriel Engel. I came here to talk you, tell you about Rocket Chat. I think it's the fastest growing open source collaboration platform. So I think nobody can argue that one of the greatest achievements of the internet is the way it connected all of us, how easy it was to send a message to anyone uh, that is on the, on the web. And I think no one can argue that the underlying technology behind all this, and most of this was email, or this still is email. Uh, but email is as old as the internet, and I guess the user experience is already showing its age. So it kind of created this vacuum where all this app that we are far too familiar with came to be and started creating this new uh, interaction. All the collaboration tools, uh, Slack, WhatsApp, Messenger, WeChat, Telegram. But they kind of forgot or they left behind the beauty of the email, like how open it was, how everybody would, could own their own data, how they would connect to any other server. And they created all these silos where the big value is because they hold all the communication on their infrastructure. So that was born Rocket Chat, because we wanted to bring all this new user experience, all those new uh, features, uh, in a world where you don't need to depend on those, those organizations. So we built it with uh, three key differentiators. One, we figured that all the components of the, the, the application, from the server side, the client, or even the UI, should be implemented on, uh, using a structure that you could change or add, implement your own channel types, do a whole branding of the UI, add your own bots, but create also different types of widgets. I guess once you have a channel with your team on it and you have the uh, authentication and the streaming of data, you should be able to create different message types, new, new types of attachments, new ways to react to messages or new actions on messages. Uh, you could, should be able to customize what data you want about each user and all the other components should change regarding this. So it's really thinking if we start off with what those tools that we already know as a starting point, how can we dream of like what else could we build? Uh, so we figured that like being an open source was just obvious because all those ideas when you start talking to other customers uh, would build the greatest product. Uh, and also thought this needed to be a decentralized uh, as email is. So it needed to be server spread. Everyone can own their email. They can host on their private cloud, AWS, so on, but uh, it needs to be a decentralized uh, application. So the idea really like, got attention. We also were featuring Rocket News, Product Hunt. Uh, in a couple of months, you could see Rocket Chat being used uh, from presidential campaign from uh, one of the largest uh, transport company in the world, Deutsche Bank. Uh, and even the Brazilian uh, space agency. They were using rocket chat <laughs> to discuss about the designs of the Brazilian rockets. And it got translated into almost 50 uh, uh, languages, uh, and our container was one of the most downloaded containers for business apps on the Docker store. Even, and you could see people all over the world using rocket chat as an example how to do DevOps, chat ops. Uh, and just as being a way of so easy was integrated into everything. Uh, we got awarded, a f uh, we got recognized like for inf InfoWorld, the Black Duck, OW2, as uh, some awards of innovations and usability, uh, and even got showcased by Google on the new Google Next uh, Cloud in San Francisco early this year as one of the, the startups uh, using their, their Google Cloud platform. Uh, so. We got a really good adoption by and a community that was created around Rocket Chat. We now have about 600 developers, uh, committers to the project. It's getting close to five, uh, 15,000 stars. Uh, and we tracked the number of servers being deployed. So now you're reaching 150,000 servers, which uh, they uh, all together have about 10 million users. Uh, and about that idea that we have that people should be able to customize and do whatever uh, to different use cases. We found in the wild that it, that really happened. That is a stockbroker in um, Sweden that created a rock chat where they, they used to talk to, to their clients and uh, uh, there are whole new features for when you're talking about when specific stock or a fund, they get the news, they get uh, different graphs about the progress or they can even give orders to buy and sell from inside the chat. Uh, we have this, this other company that we helped them to build a uh, chat for universities, 
where each student, each uh, teacher becomes the, the moderator of each channel. So they have a very separated uh, access layer. And they have to submit papers and then can discuss the papers, discuss the work that students are doing. We have this other company, it's called uh, Steam, uh, Steam uh, Connect. And they also build a rocket chat for hospitals. So every patient then becomes a channel and then invites all the doctors, invite all the, the uh, x-ray machines and they, so all the exams get posted into the channel and they get uh, to discuss and talk to nurses, order more exams. So it really proved that we have traction in different industries. So by the end of the next year, we got approached by NEA who uh, made an offer and we closed a deal in a series A round and they invested $5 million. Uh, that was, yeah, almost a year now. So we have been focusing since then in creating, sorry, a SaaS platform. Um, sorry, created a, a, a SaaS platform and also started to have some companies started like uh, contacting us because they wanted to pay for support and have SLA. Uh, BNDS is one of the largest banks in Brazil. Uh, we have uh, Ubuntu also has a, a server and a support contract. We are doing a, a work with the PwC. Uh, and even like Sony, the guys who came to meet us, they have 400 developers on the PlayStation platform. They made all the customizations to integrate with the single sign-on from inside Sony. Uh, but the way our vision is that we see all this, this uh, uh, changing from the, the how you consume all the services. Rather than having a PC and like having on your website, or then people go to smartphones and became the new platform and you're consuming services via apps. We see now more and more than people are actually starting to consume services as bots that live on whatever chat platform they're consuming. So looking at this paradigm shift, uh, we see on the long term creating the largest marketplace for those apps, bots, and services. So that's how we, can, we see you can still give away uh, the core of our platform for free, can keep open source, and we'll create the, the the ecosystem for a very, very large marketplace. We already have 10 million people and, and uh, it's growing really fast. So this is the team today. We have 25 developers plus 600 contributors worldwide. Uh, and we want you, like not just uh, investors, but other developers, other companies who are looking to uh, be uh, use an, uh, the next generation of uh, collaboration platform and invite you all to board our ship and uh, rewrite or write the new chapter of collaboration platforms in the web. Thank you. So congratulations, and I really, really like what you're doing. My big Thank problem <laughs> with all the new tools is they're all proprietary tools, and they're really good. They're so much better than email. Yeah but email is still the trusted open platform. You don't have to rely, you don't have to trust Slack to manage your emails. And, and the trust element drives the internet. It, it is what allows the internet to work. Okay, so I, I really like your embrace of open source. Thank you, here it comes now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and the other thing I really like about your presentation is you talk about your adoption curve and you have an impressive adoption curve and that's very exciting. So my question is boils down to who the hell are you guys? <laughs> uh, so where are you based out of? Whose idea was it and who, who am I trusting at Rocket Chat to manage this project through to success? So I'm uh, Brazilian, so the company, the headquarters, uh, or the development center is still in Brazil. Most, half of all of that team is still based in Brazil. Porto Alegre, if you're familiar, further down south. Uh, the idea behind was mine. I'm the founder and the, and the CEO. Uh, and I guess I always been passionate about open source since university time when I published my first open source project and that attracted some guys from IBM to go all the way down to Brazil just to meet me. And I was still in university. They wanted to meet me and see if I could work on a project for them, uh, writing a, uh, what you see is what you get, uh, editor on the web, early days. Uh, and I was running my own company, so I was, I was flattered, but I still kept running the projects. And then I guess years later, when I had the opportunity to build something that I think, okay, those guys are built something great, but I agree with you, like we need, to bring this back to open so it can be ubiquitous. 
I think email is ubiquitous because there's pretty much no barrier for entry, right? If you want to host your server, you host it. If you want to get Gmail, you get Gmail. Uh, if I want to send a message, I don't need to ask you what platform are you in. Uh, and we believe we need to bring this and the new UX and messaging apps together. And that was like our problem. We built it because we wanted to see that happening. Uh, the community got really excited. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's a very organic thing that is happening. And uh, we always are going for MIT license in, in all the stuff that we're building. Uh, uh, we are building a SaaS because we want to remove one of the barriers for entrance. We help other uh, uh, hosting providers to actually offer Rocket Chat, even that uh, we have containers being published in all the major container marketplaces. We just want this to spread and keep the, keep the license. And we think the marketplace is then the key to re re generate revenue. We have a lot of people developing plugins and extensions, and all those bots, they're coming to us and like, we want to be able to, your users, they, if they need a bot to do customer support, we have this bot, and then we will have the marketplace for all those, those add-ons and extras. For the, you know, you showed some pretty large enterprises up there, you know, Bennett ASA and, and Citibank and some others. What was the entry point? I mean, obviously they all still have email, yeah. right? They probably have some internal collaboration platform for publishing information, if they're anything like the one I work for. So what's the entry point and how do you start to grow within large customers to drive a, you know, what I would call a reliable revenue base? I realize you're giving away the platform yeah. and benefiting from the affiliates who come in and use your platform, but how do, you, how do you get the ball rolling with major customers? So like on the BN, uh, BNDS example, they, they had some hackathons uh, on, in the bank and over and over they were trying to build collaboration platforms. So in one point the dev team, the IT team said like, it must, there must be something out there that we can use. They tested a few options. They, uh, on the end they chose Rocket Chat. They installed and really only after they were about already a few hundred users they called us and asked like, we have been using your platform for quite a while. We want to know who you guys are. Can you come over and do a presentation for me? So then I arrived there, I thought it was going to be a small meeting. They actually had uh, a room for like 200 people from the bank that wanted to hear who we were. Uh, obviously the fact that I'm also Brazilian got them very happy <laughs> and excited about this. Uh, but, uh, and then all they are running on 3,000 people and scaling gradually. Uh, Deutsche Bank, the, that's, by far the largest uh, company. They have 300,000 uh, employees. Only 100,000, 150,000, they say, use, use, actually use computers because they have drivers and, and so on. Uh, and then we sc started scaling because they also they found us and then came, they came to us saying, wow, we have this problem. They were building actually a way for their service, uh, uh, customer service team to talk to the, to the, to the passengers. And they want to have a very easy way, so they want to use SMS. So we did an integration in Rocket Chat where people traveling can SMS a number and it falls into a channel and it gets from the queue a specific agent and, they, uh, and also for them was very important. It gets the message piped through uh, a language interpreter and then formulates a query, goes into five different uh, knowledge bases and then gives the answers for the service team and they have just click, choose one, and then they can add it if they want, and then set it back. And then the system th will know if it came via SMS, I should reply via SMS. If it came via email, reply via email. Now we have Facebook integration, Twitter. And, uh, so we start, the community start building all those bridges. Um, but if all of them was, they had this requirement that the proprietary solutions could not address, and they and went to find the open source, and they chose us after trying a few different options. Okay, so, so great presentation. Um, two part question. First is, um, tell me about how you manage your roadmap. The challenge with managing a product used by 10 million people and use it all slightly differently. Roadmap, coming up with a standard set of roadmap that pleases the crowd is actually very challenging. Yeah. So obviously open source have some features that you can offer with that from the community, but I'd like to hear that um, about your process. So it's the first part of the question. Second part of the question on a different tangent is that, what's your revenue model? Not that it's super important for you right now, but I'm just curious how you guys are thinking about that. So the first part is the architecture help us 
make the roadmap more flexible. And because we, are, we, we have a component uh, architecture that a lot of people come and ask, oh, we need this feature. So sometimes you just need one of the developers to tell them how to build. Uh, and then they can create that feature as a, as a plugin. So we have our roadmap, things that we're going to use our developers to do. But we dedicate a good part of our day or helping the community building the features that they want. And then they uh, actually do the pull request and add it. And we have, for instance, one of the biggest uh, pull requests was from the Department of Defense in US. Uh, we didn't have a, a layered enough, customizable enough uh, access uh, and roles and permission system. And they were like, wow, we need to comply with the DOD 5.0, whatever, there was a, a spec. So we helped them to build it, and then they did a pull request of all the APIs and all the parts. It wasn't on our roadmap, so it was a really great collaboration. And our, our architecture allowed us to do this most of the times. Uh, the second part, sorry, <laughs> it was talking about the roadmap, uh, the revenue model. So now we have about 20 companies paying for, some larger companies paying for support and SLAs. Uh, some companies pay for the uh, specific uh, professional services and developing plugins. Uh, but the end goal, we have some companies paying for the SaaS, and, but the end goal I think we want is the marketplace. Um, but it's not just a single uh, revenue model. It's not just the SaaS or just the support. Or it's kind of a mix between those things. And mainly because I, some people tell me, like, you should choose one and focus in one. But the way we see is each one of them, if we don't have it, it becomes a barrier for entrance. If we don't have a marketplace, the tool will not be complete. If we don't have a SaaS, some people will not use because they don't want to deal with the complexity. So it was almost trying to address the reasons why people would not use Rocket Chat. And we finding we, we want to have ubiquitous. We want to be as broad as email. So. Oh, great. Gabriel Engel, the rocket man from Rocket Chat. Thank you. Thank you.